Uh, we do want to go live to Levi's for some instant reaction from our guy Larry Kruger, who's down on the scene getting ready for the game that will now not include one Trey Lance. Larry, uh, here we are, my man. What's uh, what's going on? Well, you know, um, it was hard to envision, guys, um, Trey Lance playing in this game tonight. Yep. You know, um, for lots of reasons. If he played well, if he played poorly, if he got hurt, I mean, there was just – I just didn't really see any way he was going to play in this game. Um, and uh, the 49ers, to me, to me, did today what John Lynch basically indicated they were going to do when he spoke to the media at the Combine, that they were committed. To, they did a deep dive at the end of last year. They did their autopsy on last season, and they decided that they're, they made a decision. And it was probably made in February. Um we're going to commit to Brock Purdy and we're going to move off of Trey Lance. And, um, and today it's official. And, you know, just because, um, you know, it's, it's good. It's a good move for Trey. We'll see if it's a good move for the Niners. It eliminates a lot of distraction, but you know, all Niner fans remember one of the worst trades in, in Niner history was, uh, sending a good football player to the Dallas Cowboys and Charles Haley who, you know, basically became the key figure on their three Super Bowl championship teams. How many Super Bowls would Dallas have won without him? And how many would the Niners have won if they had kept him? So that was a long time ago, and different player, different time, different regimes. But uh, you never like to see uh, Dallas get better, and I think today maybe in the long term they did. You just gave me chills with the Charles Haley comp, and I know you just were doing it circumstantially and not uh, as an actual player-to-player comp, but... That gave me chills, Larry. In terms of how this all went down, was Trey Lance already at the facility? Was he there and then he left? Or was this something that happened long before the news broke about 25 minutes ago? Gibbs, I can't say for sure because I'm not down in their locker room. But um, but I would guess that that he had, you know, they they probably informed him that they were close on something and he probably didn't come in today. Um, I don't know if he went through the walkthrough yesterday. Of course, we weren't there. There was no media availability. Uh, he wasn't there on Wednesday. Uh, and you guys know the story at this point that Shanahan talked to him and, and uh, basically he wasn't in the right frame of mind to practice. So he sent him home and said, you know, come back tomorrow. I don't know if he was there yesterday for the walkthrough. But um, it was pretty clear that once they decided they were not going to make him number number two, that their only move was to trade him. Larry Kruger with us, 95-7 the game. Trey Lance has been traded to the Dallas Cowboys. Larry, what's your reaction to the compensation that they got in the form of a fourth round pick? Well, I mean, it's you know, it's like somebody buying a Ferrari for two hundred grand and selling it, you know, a year later for fifty grand. There's no way to dress that up. But if they're if it's true, Mark, that their offers at the draft were were conditional fifth round picks then a fourth-round pick is probably the highest offer they had, and they probably took it. My guess is the Vikings probably were in that bidding but maybe weren't offering as much, and Dallas probably gave the Niners a little bit more, and they opted to take more and do the best for their own franchise. What does it say about the trade that they actually chose Dallas? Is it that they had the best compensation, or are they just not concerned of maybe Trey Lance coming back to haunt them against a conference rival? You know, that's a great point, Gibbs. I mean, I, there's a lot of people who would say send him anywhere but Dallas. But at the same time, maybe, you know, if the, the talk from Mike Silver was that his sources were saying that, hey, they better move him soon because they're, what they're going to get is going down. And if they were going to get a conditional fifth, who knows? Maybe after the way he played against the Raiders, they were only being offered late day three picks, like round six or round seven. And maybe a fourth from Dallas may have been a couple rounds higher than what you know the other offers looked like. So my guess is that you know I, I guess you could spin it that they sent him to a good spot, but I think they really, at the end of the day, if you really did you know got truth out of everybody, I bet you Dallas far and away was their best offer. Larry, you said earlier that this is a good move for Trey. I'm actually trying to figure out why that is. 
you, you, you have an established backup already there, a very established starter for the remainder of Trey Lance's contract. Why do you think this is a good spot for Trey? I think it's a good spot for Trey because, um, one, it's a, it's a fresh start. Um, I, I'm not of the belief, Mark, that he, the only way for Trey to get better is he needs to play. In the NFL, you need to play to get better when you're ready to play. And in my professional opinion, he's not ready to play. So if he had gone somewhere where he was going to play right away, I think he's going to fail right away. So Dallas is a place where he can go, get more tutelage, fresh start. Um, that contract extension, that his next one is, is coming up, but it's not a for sure thing. And if Trey has the kind of potential that many people see in him, that Cooper Rush is a non-factor altogether. He'll blow right by Cooper Rush. So I, I think it's a good start. Plus, you just got to go somewhere where they believe in you and somewhere where you can learn and not be asked to play right away. That's my belief. I know the common wisdom is the, is the opposite. He needs to play. He needs to play. Yeah, eventually he needs to play. But he's not ready to play. And that Raider game showed it. And to me, now he'll get a chance to continue his development and potentially get to play either later this year, maybe a, a year from now. And I think at that point, he'll be more ready to play. And now the attention shifts to the new QB3, Brandon Allen. Is he good enough to come in and win games for the Niners? And also, Larry, what do they do in terms of adding another QB for the practice squad? Yeah, that's a good question, Dibs. I, you know, they're going to wait until Friday, I'm sure, to see the cut down. There's a number of quarterbacks that will be cut. Heck, the Vikings have the kid from BYU. They're saying is most likely going to be cut and put on the practice squad. Um, they'll have a chance if they want to pursue other, you know, young quarterbacks for their practice squad. I'm sure there's somebody else that they had a high grade on. As far as Brandon Allen, you know, Brandon Allen is, you know, the, the one thing about Brandon Allen is he's not, he's not um, by any means, a, you know, anything special. He's, he's what, two and seven and nine career starts. Um, but he has played a lot of NFL football, and, um, you know, he's, he's, if, if you get to your third-string quarterback, you want somebody who's ready to play and, and can step in, he's a pro. I mean, he's, he's going to be calm. Um, he's going to know the offense. He operates the short game and the bootleg game and a lot of the stuff that Brock Purdy can do. You know, Brandon Allen can operate that game. Uh, I just am relatively unimpressed because everything beyond like 18 to 20 yards down the field, his downfield accuracy is really, really spotty at best. Larry, uh, just in terms of the attend, the time to have attention to, to throw at things, is there anything that makes you say now that this is done, a Bosa deal can get done? I don't think they're connected, Mark, but, um, but you know, I think Bosa's deal will get done. I'd be surprised. I mean, I, I told you guys at the beginning of August that my deadline was around the 15th to the 20th. We're now five days beyond that. Uh, I think any we're absolutely in the sweet spot. They were never going to play in the preseason. They have a couple weeks of practice before the opener. Um, some of those will be padded practices, I would imagine. So they've got an ability to get him up to speed. But, you know, I mean, you watch those D-line drills. These guys run the, you know, run all kinds of agility drills. It's about your girdle, right? It's about your, it's about your, your, abduct, your adductor and your groin and your, you know, your quads and your, your you know, your hammies and making sure that you're, because football movements are not the same as working out movements. Now, Bosa's dad was a D-lineman. Maybe he's running the, the hoop uh, in his backyard. But, you know, unless he's doing D-line-specific drills, he's going to take two or three or four practices to get ready. And I hope they get him signed soon because they're getting right down to it. Week one is essential. they got to get the win in Pittsburgh. And that means they need him to play a full complement of snaps. But you don't want to risk him, and he's not going to go 90%. He only knows one speed. So, you know what? I mean, the last thing you want to do is sign him to a monster deal and have him get hurt. Mm. So, you know, I'd rather see him play a full complement of plays, but that means ramping him up quickly in practice. That means getting him signed in the next 72 hours. Uh, 
You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco, always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. We'll get back to your calls in just a moment, but hanging with Larry Kruger live from Levi's. Larry, I was warned to not go too deep into the depth chart, and I already got in trouble for my tight end breakdown, but Jake Moody, is it time to panic? Well, it's not time to panic, Gibbs, because you, even though it's late August, miraculously they've set themselves up well and they're fortunate in that there are other options. You know, Zane Gonzalez, you guys were were down at practice. Zane Gonzalez hit 50 yarders like they were nothing this summer. He, there was one day he made a 55 and a 57 yarder in the same practice. He'll get many opportunities tonight to kick at Levi's. If he fell on his face and Moody's quad wasn't ready or, uh, you know, you got Robbie Gold, who's still sitting in Chicago standing by near a phone. So, you know, he's never missed in the playoffs, and and he's quite dependable. So if Gold was signed or if you Gold was signed and you didn't have Zane Gonzalez, it would be one thing. But they've got, they've got options. You know, they could put Moody on. If they didn't work confident in his health or his psyche, they could put him on the IR to start the year and just go with Gonzalez. I kind of spun it as they were going to go with Moody, trade Gonzalez for a pick, uh, but you know what? They can go with Gonzalez. And if Gonzalez falls in his face uh, tonight and, and goes misses a couple of field goals or a PAT, they can kiss him off and call Robbie, and he'll be here tomorrow. Larry Kruger at Levi's. All right, man, go um, go talk to Kyle after the game, and, and, and please hold his feet to the fire, and don't you dare let him off the hook. <laughs> hey, Mark, I'll say this, man. I've been listening to you guys consistently. I appreciate your guys' coverage of this. Uh, I think it's been really balanced. I think you guys have been on this, basically. Uh, I know you haven't been at every practice, but I feel like you guys have been on this Lance thing as well as almost anybody in the Bay Area media, man. So keep it rolling. Larry, thank, thank you, Larry. you. And uh, and same to you. you uh, good job through that whole conversation. Never saying I told you so to the audience, because I know yeah. you've been talking about a Trey Lance trade for about six months. Scoreboard, everybody. <laughs> See you, boys. See you, Larry. Larry. <laughs>